here's Jeff Kirkham, and Jeff will take us through some of the memorabilia that he's brought with us today. Hello everyone, and uh, thank you for coming to the event put on by the Hebrew Historical Society. And uh, I am Jeff Kirkham, I'm the nephew of Lloyd Gray. Start off with a little background on Lloyd, and in the picture here, this picture was done by one of Lloyd's associates uh, while he was still in the military, I think it was back in 1951. Um, we also have here uh, a picture of Lloyd when he was a second lieutenant, and uh, this was uh, right after he you know, graduated from flight school in Florida, or in uh, Pennsylvania, and then to Florida. Um, before he was sent overseas. Now, Lloyd, Lloyd was, a little history here, Lloyd was born September 3rd, uh, 1923, and he died uh, January 15th, 2005, at the age of 81. So Lloyd lived a, a good, full, full life. Um, I know that Lloyd would be very happy that uh, his photo, and uh, at some point, some of this other material be given to the Historical Society, um, but I'm sure Lloyd would want to make sure that some of the other friends or boys that he grew up with are also uh, highlighted here because he would want to make sure that this is not just about Lloyd, this is about uh, the other boys and men from Hebron that went to fight in, in actually all the wars and he would want uh, some of them to be mentioned. I know he would, and forgive me if I don't mention all the ones that he was associated with, but you know, the Porter boys, you know, Howard, Earl, David, and, uh, and uh, Len, uh, I can't forget Len, and, you know, another Army Air Corps uh, gentleman. And then uh, also um, Mill Porter, who grew up with, uh, with Lloyd, and, and Dwight Martin, and uh, last but not least, Henry Jones, who uh, we're all thankful, with, who's still with us and still being able to uh, uh, give us little bits and pieces of different uh, history within Hebrew. I know he's provided me with a lot. So those are all uh, good friends of Lloyd. Now, going back, and I do have a few things here. Uh, we have a picture of the, uh, the aircraft, which is the... Um, Gray Eagle, that was, that was Lloyd's, and that's a, a B-17, and this shows it over in, uh, over in England, and uh, this is the type of plane that he flew all his missions in uh, over Germany, and then we have another, another picture of it on the flight line, uh, the same aircraft there. Um, when uh, going back to uh, 19... 44, and uh, that's when, uh, besides some of the earlier things that the, the youth do in, in, when they're young and going around and having a good time, um, Lloyd was, he, he got his, he became a pilot and he was in, in Florida, and at that time, uh, of course, the communication wasn't as good as it is today, so uh, he was able to, in some type of code, he was able to give his parents, uh, Susan and Harold Gray, some kind of code when he would be uh, flying, they knew that he was going to be heading overseas, so he was able to tell them in some code that yeah, he would be flying over uh, on Hebron on September 7th, 1944. So upon that time, uh, I have here, which uh, I can leave some copies, which I'll have for the people that are going to be attending the, uh, uh, the, the formal presentation uh, early next week or later next week. But it lists the actual orders and their, their uh, secret orders that were given to Lloyd uh, to fly up from Florida. And what they did is they hopscotch from different uh, airports, their air bases, all the way up the East Coast, all the way up through past Hebron. And then they finally uh, flew out of New Hampshire. So I have copies here of, of the actual orders. And it lists all the men in his crew. And then also there is some other uh, B-17 uh, aircraft that were associated with that. I also have that I, I leave so that people can take a look at it is the actual orders and they're showing from the different uh, locations that they hopscotched across when they finally got to um, over to England for instance uh, Hunter uh, Air Base which are, 
which was in uh, New Hampshire to Train Airfield, then went to uh, the Goose Bay, then from Goose Bay to Meeksfield, and then Meeksfield to uh, Valley, and I'm not exactly sure where Valley is. I'm thinking it might be in, in England or close to it. Um, but he was actually, um, the, the field that we was stationed at was Glatton, G-L-A-T-T-O-N Station 130, which is in Glatton, England. So that's, uh, that's also mentioned in uh, some of the books, which I, I will leave these books here also. But this one is the, uh, he was in this uh, 457 bomb group, and that was the 749th Squadron. And this was, uh, there's also a picture in here of his aircraft that he flew most of his missions in, in going over Germany. And then there's another book here that I'll leave. It's called uh, uh, Black Puff Polly, and it shows um, the, the author here actually uh, autographed it for Lloyd, but there is a segment in here where one of the planes um, from Lloyd's group that went down and tells a little story about that also. Jeff, was the Gray Eagle ever hit? Uh, I'm sure it was hit with some flak. Flak. Uh, but I, don't, I can't imagine you'd have 35 missions over Germany and you didn't get hit with some flak. But apparently, none of it was uh, known in his crew, I believe, was ever killed. And they were very, very lucky. I've read. How large um, was his crew? Uh, ten, ten people. Ten individuals. Very lucky people. Yeah, very lucky people. Very lucky. There was. Uh, four officers and then the rest were uh, enlisted men within the crew. You can see from here, though, this is one of Lloyd's, that uh, he had an interest in aviation at a very young age. So uh, I actually even have a small um, airplane at home that's motorized, not motorized, but you pedal it, where uh, Lloyd and his uh, uh, two sisters uh, were they played when they were in the country. Where did he grow up? Lloyd grew up in uh, actually a couple of different houses in uh, in town here. One is uh, one of the first houses was where Paul Popowitz is presently living today. Uh, my grandparents and mother and uh, Lloyd and Mary lived in that house for a while, and then they uh, purchased the house right on Main Street. If you um, face the Legion, it's uh, three houses down on the right. It's right down from where that, that little cafe is today in between uh, where Matt McCorson has his uh, real estate shop. And that, that's the Gray House right there. And they lived there for many years until uh, my grandparents passed away. When it was so he lived so. just about on the green. He did. I uh, lived right on the green. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, they all went to school in uh, the schoolhouse, which is where the American Legion is today. And that'll, that schoolhouse will come into play when I go over a little bit of uh, things that happen. So uh, what I have, uh, so here they were, they were on their way up from uh, Florida and they were hopscotching all the way up through. And when Lloyd, uh, and I mentioned before that he uh, let my, his parents know that they were coming up. So on September 7th, that's when he flew over the town of Heaven and he actually buzzed the town starting from the west side of Hebron going all the way through the center and that's when we had a green here in town. Flew right up to Robinson's Hill and made a loop around and then came around and did it again. So, and his mother had come out of the house? Well, not only his mother, but you had all the neighbors. And how we have this documented here is that I actually have uh, the letter here that my grandmother wrote to Lloyd on September 8th, 1944. And uh, within this letter, um, she describes about uh, Walter Hugh uh, coming out without his shirt on and how other people uh, in town, how the messages got, uh, but the phones that back then were where you had an operator and how uh, the information got through, uh, going to everyone through the operator uh, on the phone. And uh, also Bill Jones, uh, who uh, had a, a garage over here, which is now the I, uh, a doctor's place over here. It uh, used to be Gil Jones's garage, and actually Gil's house was right out this door to my left here. There was a house there, and that's where Gil Jones lived. And unfortunately, that's where uh, Gil's son was killed uh, 
during the war. So, um, but with this with this letter, it goes through it and explains about all the different people that came out, how people were, you know, some were bending over, laughing so much, and other people had tears in their eyes. And you know, there was one segment here when I found this letter that, uh, and I was going through this stuff and I started reading it, and. It, uh, it, it brought tears to my eyes because in here my grandmother, you know, she says, uh, says to Lloyd that she could wish that if she was an angel, she would reach up there and touch him, um, you know, when he flew by. And then Bill Jones said that uh, the way he came up through, that he could actually see him in the cockpit of the plane. So, uh, but I am going to take and transpose this. I'll take it and put it out in, in, uh, um, in so that it's clearer, so that everybody will be able to enjoy uh, that letter. And we'll put it on the Historical Society website, along with a lot of our other Lloyd Gray information. Right. That would be great. That would be great. So, um, the other thing that happened, and I was reading in the letter here, that uh, the kids were all in school at that time, which once again was at the Legion Hall. And uh, the teacher was not going to, you know, let the kids out. But then, all of a sudden they heard those engines of this airplane flying over and before the teacher knew it, all the kids were already running out of the, out of the schoolhouse and to, you know, to see the plane go by. So this was a secret mission and uh, all the members, the ten members of the crew were not able to tell their, their families what was going on. So what they did was they, they took and they had, it was, I think uh, there was like 300 letters and they threw the letters out of the plane and all the kids from the school and everyone ran out and they all collected all these letters and they, they were sent to the families of these men that were flying over uh, on their missions over to England. And uh, there was uh, a couple letters that they found that because they hit the prop and it cut them right in half, you know, 40 pieces of it. So a couple of people put out a reward to the kids uh, telling them that if they could find all the pieces to the letter, they would get, uh, I don't know what it was, uh, some either penny candy or some, some kind of reward that they were going to get, but uh, some, some uh, pieces were never found, but that, we thought that was very interesting. So I will get that uh, uh, completed, and then, as Marianne says, that will be added to the, to the website. So let's go. We're over in Glatton, uh, England, and so then the missions start, and uh, I have some Older pictures here of Lloyd that, uh, um, of when he was uh, over in England and when he was a second lieutenant over there, because he was only a second lieutenant when, uh, when he was the pilot. Lloyd was uh, the, the, the captain of the, of, the, of the pilot of the airplane. He was also the youngest member of the crew. So, uh, what was he? How old was he? About 21? Uh, 19 or 20, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 20, 21, somewhere in that area. I'd have to, we'd have to figure that out. So Lloyd did 35, completed 35 missions over there. And um, what I have here, and this has been taken and um, put down so that, uh, typed out so that um, everybody can read it. And I believe that is on the website if I'm not sure. It is, it's already on there yeah. with, with an article that Donna McCullough had written. Yeah. So, and this, these are the actual notes, his diary of every mission that he flew over in Germany. I also have, Lloyd, Lloyd kept everything in, I think that's where I've come in, you know, I keep everything also, so it's, uh, which is, I think, a good thing. But this was uh, one of Lloyd's uh, um, officers that were, was in with him, uh, Charles Keller. Uh, we also have his diary copy of his diary here for all the missions that uh, uh, were flown over there. And one segment here I thought I'd single out and just state is that uh, mission uh, number 34, and it's uh, Cyber, January 29, 1945, 640. And I would believe that's in the morning. Well, Lloyd finished up today, for which, hooray, he really been sweating out these last few. I'm really glad for that guy. They just don't come any better. And I rate him among the best pilots I've ever flown with. He controls that monster bird absolutely. So I think you can see here that uh, 
not only did he complete his duties over there for you know for our country, but he was well thought of um, by the men that he that he flew with and participated with. As I mentioned, Lloyd also he collects everything, and he was able to get from uh, one of his uh, other uh, officers that were in the group over there. Um, we have copies of the mission orders for every mission uh, that was flown over there. So there's there's a lot of things that should probably be put in a binder. I was thinking that you should write a book. <laughs> I think that I should write a book. Uh, but this this is this is also something that uh, at some point will become available, and there may be at different times when we have. Um, uh, different programs that are going to be going on, they'll be, I'll make it available at those times for people to see. Uh, they are one of a kind, so we hate to, hate to have them lose them. Um, Lloyd, just a little bit on uh, Lloyd's father, uh, Harold Gray. Um, I also have a picture of him and my grandmother in the center of town in his World War I uniform. And I have up here in front, um, I have, these are, these are Lloyd's, these two are Lloyd's, 8th Air Force, and uh, this is the insignia for the 8th Air Force, and these are his actual, uh, the jackets that he had at that time. You can see this is, this is after he got promoted, this is a uh, first lieutenant uh, versus a, uh, a second lieutenant. And Lloyd uh, retired in uh, 1965, uh, and I was just happening to, uh, I was, went into the Air Force in 1965, Lackland Air Force Base, and Lloyd was at Kelly Air Force Base, which is connected to Lackland. And uh, uh, Lloyd was actually able to get me out of uh, a day of basic training, and I went over there and I met a general for the first time, and I was there for, uh, for Lloyd's uh, retirement, which, uh, which was very neat. Uh, the other blouse, and this is what they call them, um, these were blouses, yeah, but this uniform here was my, my grandfather, Harold Gray, and these are all his campaigns uh, during World War I. He was in the Yankee, uh, Yankee Division uh, in the uh, 26th Infantry. So, Jeff, pick that one up so we can see the Yankee Division insignia and sure. the medal. And yeah. So there's, there's, trousers the Yankee, and there's the Yankee Division, and there was the, I guess that's a corporal, and, uh, or a private. And this shows the different campaigns. Uh, uh, and they're all in French here, but there was the, uh, the Champagne, and there's like one, two, three, four, five different campaigns that, uh, you know, that he fought in over there. And we kind of remember that's when the trenches and the, and the gas that they were used over there. So. The mustard gas and a lot of horses. Yeah, and yeah. Well, I, and I have, uh, I actually, I don't have it with me, but I have a gas mask. It goes back, in, you know, as you can imagine, the plastic or the rubber and everything is getting to go uh, get a little bad by now. We don't you know, have, you don't have your grandfather's paperwork. I do. I actually have, uh, my grandfather was first in the Harold Gray. He was in the, uh, in the Navy first and he lied about his age. He was actually born in New York and uh, he lied about his age and went into the, into the Navy. So I think he might have been in the, have been with the Spanish American War, and then he got out of the Navy, and then he went right into the. So I have his discharge papers for that. Um, I have his. Uh, then he went into the Army, and I have his discharge papers for uh, when he got out of the Army also. So I've got a lot of material that I that I got put together. And then, and then he came back here and married Susan Su Susan Minor. Susan Minor. And then they had three children, three one children. of whom... Right, they had uh, uh, Dorothy, who was the oldest, that's my mother. Uh, then there's Lloyd, and then there's Mary Gray, Ventress, who uh, she lives in uh, East Haddon now, and Mary still is presently alive, so she's the last, last of the three. Now, just as a, a little note here, I have a, a, uh, a belt buckle here that's for the American Legion, and this has on here, past commander, and it's... Jeff's going G to polish it before the next time. Right, G. Merrill Jones post. So this was, this goes a bit before Keith and Batson. So this is World War I still. 
And then there's a, I have a booklet here that's who's who in the YD, and that's Yankee Division. And uh, this lists uh, all the members that were in the Yankee Division Association. And they all had uh, license plate, uh, or most of them had license plate numbers. So uh, my grandfather, Harold Gray, Harold Lloyd Gray, um, he is the ninth registrant in the association. And uh, he had a license plate, YD9. Uh, that went from my grandfather Harold Gray to Lloyd Gray, and then uh, Lloyd uh, had it in his will that I got it after he passed away. So I, I have YD9 now as my, my license plates on my vehicles. Getting towards the end here, um, I also have uh, some scrapbooks, and within these scrapbooks are different articles, um, and these are only some of the scrapbooks that I have. But there's, there's different articles in here about uh, World War II, um, about uh, um, the boys in Hebrew in here, um, the Porter boys, it all lists out. Uh, so these are all types of things that I, I'd like to make available at some point um, for everyone to see and to share. The last thing I have here is what this is what a lot of the people did when they uh, they didn't have all these other extracurricular activities that we have today, but uh, I'm pretty sure my mother put this together. And these are all Norman Rockwell uh, pictures uh, about the day, and a lot of it has to do with patriotism and the everyday life of, uh, of the families during that time period. So that's pretty much without getting into uh, real depth. I know that we're going to want to do something in the future, but... Uh, so we're looking forward to a continuation, learning about World War II, both abroad and at home. The home front, you know, as you can see in that scrapbook and a lot of the activities. Uh, Jeff is giving us the portrait of his uncle and the rest of the items will be either transcribed, copied, scanned, some will be available. Right. And we're gonna get Jeff back for a, a more complete well, thank you very much, and uh, I'm sure my, my Uncle Lloyd and the rest of the family really appreciate uh, uh, giving this photo to the members of Hebron and who else ever want to take uh, advantage of it. Thank you.